anytime you're a project as old as Ubuntu, as big as Ubuntu, you are bound to find some ancient bugs still affecting modern versions. Now, generally, you hope they're not really important bugs. It's like a crash that happens under a weird condition. It's using too much RAM because of memory allocation issue. What you generally hope is there isn't an undiscovered privilege escalation bug. But you can't win them all, and sometimes they slip through the cracks. Now, technically, this isn't purely an Ubuntu problem. It's a package shipped on Ubuntu, and other distros may ship it as well. But Ubuntu is known to be affected out of the box. And as is quite often the case, this was identified by Qualys, uncovering five local privilege escalation vulnerabilities in Need Restart. And you might be asking, what is Need Restart? Because you probably never heard of it. This is a small project made by Thomas Lisk. This checks which daemons need to be restarted after library upgrades. As a more comprehensive explanation, Need Restart is a utility that scans your system to determine whether a restart is necessary for the system or its services. Specifically, it flags services for restart if they're using outdated shared libraries, such as when a library is replaced during a package update. Because it is integrated into server images, Need Restart is set to automatically run after apt operations like install, upgrade, or remove, including unattended upgrades. Its primary role is identifying services that require restarting after critical library updates, such as the C library, glibc. This process ensures that services utilize the latest library versions without requiring a complete system reboot, enhancing uptime and performance. Now, when we're talking about the average desktop user, this doesn't matter. If you upgrade your system, I know people like to say, you don't need to restart Linux. Yes, you do. Restart your system. It is going to make your life considerably easier. However, if we're talking a server environment where maybe you don't have the best architecture to restart parts of your system, in that case, having a system like this that makes it easy to restart services is a good thing. This project has been around for a very long time, but was enabled by default in Ubuntu Server 2104. So what they discovered were five separate CVEs. CVE 2024, 48, 9, 90, 48, 9, 91, 9, 92, 10, 2, 24, and 11, 0, 0, 3. And in just a moment, we'll get into the details of what is actually happening there. Now, the issue was fixed in the 3.8 version. As for the affected versions, every version, every version prior to 3.8 is affected by this. Now, it first became a package in the 0.8 release. So this means every version going back 10 years is affected by the problem. This is a decade old vulnerability for a privilege escalation bug. At a high level, this exploit is achieved by manipulating the attacking controlled environment variable that influences the Python slash Ruby interpreter, passing unsatisfied data to a library that expects safe input, thereby enabling the execution of arbitrary shell commands. Arbitrary shell commands as the root user. This means basically anything that you want to do. Now, whilst this does affect every single version, Ubuntu doesn't care to fix the problem on every single affected version because some of those are outside the support window. So they're going back and backporting patches down to the 2.6 version. This is shipped on 1604. So from 1604 to the latest version, those have been addressed if they're in the support period. So not the 10 releases, but the 04 releases. And on the 1604 one, that is only being affected, that is only being like, addressed if you're in the extended support period. So for regular people, um, you know, those versions are still affected. However, if you're a regular person, what are you doing running 1604 in production? Stop doing that. 
Now, the impact is as you would expect. This poses considerable risk for enterprises, including unauthorized access to sensitive data, malware installation, and disruption of business operations. It could lead to data breaches, regulatory non-compliance, and erosion of trust among customers and stakeholders, ultimately affecting the organization's reputation. Enterprises should swiftly mitigate this risk by updating the software or disabling the vulnerability feature. If you don't have an updated version for whatever reason, it can be disabled in the config with a single line change, but you're better off just ensuring you are running up to date packages. Now, as Qualys always does, they also have a technical write-up. The first CV I want to talk about is 2024-48990. This allows local attackers to execute arbitrary code as root by tricking need restart into running the Python interpreter with an attacker-controlled Python path environment variable and 48992. This is the exact same thing, but the Ruby interpreter and the Ruby lib environment variable. To determine whether a Python process needs to be restarted, need restart extracts the Python path environment variable from from this process is slash proc slash PID slash environ at line 193 right here. Sets this environment variable if it exists at line 196 and executes this right here at line 203 with a dash argument to read a short hard coded script from standard in at line 204. Unfortunately, if a Python process belongs to a local attacker, then need restart executes Python at line 203 with an attacker controlled Python path environment variable, which allows the attacker to execute arbitrary code as root, even though need restarts hard coded Python script at line 204 is not attacker controlled at all. This is our Python CVE. For example, in our exploit, we run a simple Python process which sleeps forever with a Python path set to the home directory and plant a shared library in our home directory. As soon as need restart executes Python with our Python path environment variable at line 203, our shared library is executed by Python's initialization code and creates an SUID root shell in the home directory. This obviously does require the files to be injected into the system. This isn't something you do remotely over the network, so it does require a user installing a malicious script or a malicious application that is going to dump these files into the system. But if that manages to happen, then that file can be executed as the root user. And if you control this, if you manage to inject this, you can do anything you want on the system. Now, initially they thought this could probably be done with Ruby as well, but they weren't entirely sure. Turns out with further testing, yes, it can be. And that is the separate CVE I talked about earlier. Moving on to the next CVE, 2024-48991. This allows local attackers to execute arbitrary code as root by winning a race condition and tricking need restart into running their own fake Python interpreter instead of the system's real Python interpreter. To determine whether a process is indeed a Python process, need restart reads this process slash proc slash PID slash exe at line 520 and then matches it against a regular expression at line 45. This regular expression has led to a separate vulnerability, CVE 2022-3688. Now, to be fair, it was fixed. We tried to bypass the fixed anchored regular expression at line 45, but we failed. However, we eventually realized that the file name that is checked at line 45 is not necessarily the same file name that is executed at line 203, which is not in this one, but it was up in this right here. The file name that is checked is read from such proc such PID such exe in the middle of need restarts main loop at line 520. But the file name that is executed was first read from such proc such PID such exe long before need restart entered its main loop. And this is why you need to verify what you are using just before you use it. In other words, need restart is vulnerable to a TOC2 race condition. Time of check, time of use. Basically, when the value is checked, it points to the correct thing. But enough time is waited between that point and when it is used, giving this giant gap for it to be modified 
and the program having no idea the modification took place. For example, our exploit slash home slash Jane slash race waits for need restart to read our slash proc slash PID slash exe for the first time and then quickly exe CVEs the system's real Python interpreter with a script that simply sleeps for some time. This could be anything else. It could be steal all your data. As a result, need restart does its checks on the real Python interpreter, but executes on our own slash home slash Jane slash race instead as the root user. Now let's go to the final CVEs, CVE 2024-10224. If unsanitized input was used with the library module scan depth before version 1.36, a local attacker could possibly execute arbitrary shell commands by opening a pesky pipe, such as passing commands pipe as a file name or by passing arbitrary strings to eval. And 2024 11.003. Before version 3.8 passes unsanitized data to a library module scan depth, which expects safe input, this could allow a local attacker to execute arbitrary shell commands. After we discovered the earlier CVEs in Python and Ruby's interpreter, we began to wonder whether the support code for the Perl interpreter might also be vulnerable to a local privilege escalation. Unlike need restart support code for Python and Ruby, the support code for Perl does not execute the Perl interpreter itself. Instead, it calls the scan depths function from Perl's scan depths module, which analyzes a Perl script by recursively reading its source files. We therefore grep the scan depths module for one of the oldest pitfalls of the Perl programming language, the two argument form of open, which allows attackers to execute arbitrary shell commands if they control the name of the file to be opened. For example, commands and then pipe. This is a well-known and ancient problem in Perl. There is a write-up from 1999 about the problem. Now, it's only a problem if you are not sanitizing the input that goes into the function. If you know what you're doing with it, it's fine. Turns out, um, is not being sanitized going through need restart. In our exploit, we simply run a Perl script named slash home slash Jane slash Perl and then end it with the pipe command, which sleeps forever. And as soon as need restart calls scan depths to analyze our script, the script is opened, but because the file name ends with a pipe, it is treated as a shell command and our own slash home slash Jane slash Perl is executed instead as the root user. And while reviewing need restart patches for these vulnerabilities, we have discovered that Perl scan depths module is also trivially exploitable through various calls to the eval function. Consequently and impressively, in response to our advisory, all of scan depths vulnerable calls to open and eval have been patched, thus fixing the CVE, and need restart's dependence on scan depths has been completely removed. It uses a simple regex based approach now, thus fixing the other CVE. Now being a local privilege escalation, it's not something that is as bad as some of the things out there, you know, like executing it from a remote machine. Like you still need to get the file onto the system to make this happen. However, if you manage to do so, you convince someone to click a link and download a thing and updates happen. Yeah, you have a bit of a problem then and privilege escalation, no matter what it is, whether it's a local or a remote one, is a bad thing and need to be fixed. And luckily, it has been addressed in the package. So make sure you update those if you're using an Ubuntu server. I absolutely love seeing exploits like this, especially ones that have been around for over a decade. The fact that something like this just remains undiscovered because it's in some random little package that nobody ever bothered to check I love it. It's fun. Anyway, if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and update your packages.